and welcome to another how-to episode. I'm Mark from Mark's Trains and in this episode I'm going to show you how to set up and operate the Digicars DR5000 system with the Ullenbrock Daisy 2 throttle using a loco net connection. So the advantages of using the Digicars DR5000 system is not only is it a basic command station with a, a throttle that you can plug into it, it also offers uh, many advanced features and allows for expansion in the future. So with an example, it's got a built-in Wi-Fi um, access point. So you're able to connect an iPad, an iPhone, or any tablet device you've got using a Wi-Fi system to control your trains. Um, controllers such as Y-Throttle, um, to, just to name one as an example, they can be used quite easily using an iPhone, giving you a remote control option. You're also able to operate using full computer automation. You can do this by either connecting over the Ethernet cable or using Wi-Fi as well, although it's a bit more reliable using the Ethernet cable. So with the Ullenbrock DAISY 2 controller, you're able to utilize the LocoNet connection on the DR5000 to give you a handheld control. This is the controller for the DAISY 2. Um, also in the box, you're given a flexible coil lead, which gives you a bit of stretch on it, which is quite good. And lastly, an English version of the quick start guide. Um, it's, it's not too much detail in there. It doesn't really go into detail about programming and stuff like that. So today I'm going to show you how to get the controller set up and how to actually operate it and work on using the advanced functions such as programming and stuff. It's quite a simple, straightforward controller to use. I actually quite like it because it's got a built back backlit LED display and also the keys are backlit as well. So I'll give you a quick demonstration. So, within the box, like I said, you get a flexible lead, the controller, and a quick start guide. I'll shove that over there for now. So to get connected and get started, firstly, plug in to the bottom. I find it easier using the tag end to plug in. Um, it's, it's a better way to handle the connection, but it doesn't matter which end it go to. In terms of LocoNet, you've got two ports here. You've got LocoNet B and LocoNet T. So LocoNet T is designed primarily for expansion modules such as feedback, points, accessories, blah, blah, blah. The B um, indicates that it can be used on a booster or a throttle. It doesn't really matter which port you plug it into. Um, I will demonstrate now. It will still work on the booster port and it will also work on the throttle port. From the factory, the controller, the DAISY 2, isn't set up in English language all the time. So to do that, to change the language, you simply have to press mode, which is this button here, and then press six for configuration. And then key to remember is one for English, and you simply scroll up or down. And when you're finished, you just press the enter button and the language is selected. So I'm gonna go as an example and change the language to German or Deutsch, press enter. And as you can see, everything's all there. Number three, health, that means help. So press an F1, go back up to English and enter. It's now on English language. Press the loco button, the big red button here to get back to the normal screen. So you may notice on a DR5000, you've got a stop and go switch. So press and go switch, turns the system on. And you can see I've got a little um, locks, lock pilot decoder plugged in just for testing purposes really. Um, pressing the stop button turns the power off. As soon as you plug the controller in from scratch, it tends to go to stop mode. Um, obviously in this case we've already got it enabled. To override or actually turn the power for the track on and off, you just press this lower bottom left red button. So that's power off comes up on the screen to stop, press it again, and away you go. So let's go into the advanced features. So you've got your basic key options of zero, one through to nine. And to go to a higher option on the controller, you press the up key, and you're then able to select functions 10, 11, 12, up to 16. Press again, you can then run from 17 to 24. So it doesn't quite utilize all 28 function keys that you get on some of the other controllers out there, but to be fair, 20, 24 keys is plenty enough. Um, simply scrolling back up, 
we'll go to another screen don't worry about that for now and then up again brings you back to the normal screen and i can press the lights on and off like so if you go up one too many and you're on 24 and you want function i don't know 15 just press down and it allows you to go to function 15 um pressing the five it will op op operate function 15 for you so in terms of configuration um, there's two different methods of actual control so you can either turn the dial forward backward to give you your speed selection um, change in direction it's done the same way here we are so that's forward spinning clockwise all the way back to zero and then you have to wait a moment then turn it the other way and you'll see the directions changed so I'm going to change it again that's forwards that's backwards and then you're able to rotate anti-clockwise for reverse so that's one method of the control but you can also use this push button here to change the direction using another control setup so to do this we'll go into menu and then we'll go into number six which is configuration and then we're going to go to number four throttle at the moment it's set for dc and we can change that to ac press enter press loco button or lock which is german for loco and now we're able to control the direction change by pressing the control knob inwards so that's forward that's reverse um, whichever best suits your needs to be honest um, and then that's just a standard control and no matter how far you go anti-clockwise it will always stay at zero um, for me I, I don't i don't really like the idea of having to press that all the time in case you knock it by accident and it changes direction so for me i'll go to six four go up dc mode select enter and away we go so i turn track power on locomotives in forward direction we'll turn this anti-clockwise by one click and then that will power through in reverse and bring this to a stop and if you keep turning and turning and turning it won't do anything at all until you stop pause for a moment rotate one click uh, clockwise and that will bring forward direction on and you just control it by your thumb so it's pretty straightforward getting used to the basics um, you can use all the sound options there you can set the icons up a um, bit advanced but it's quite a good lightweight controller it does what it says on the tin so by pressing um, let's just get out of that a minute so by pressing lock button and say you dial in address number 12 hit enter that brings you up with local number 12 as you can see all the icons are quite blank at the moment you can then go into settings and change the icons to suit um, for me in the workshop i mostly test locomotives it's it's normally sat on number three um, i don't really need to use the other keys i, I kind of know the different functions off by heart so then other settings you can go into option one that's the locomotives display screen you can also control turnouts you can control routes you can configure locomotive data so that's all those icons which i was just speaking about briefly um change the address everything else like that the loco name the symbol etc um one that i find quite interesting and very handy is the programming menu so by pressing mode then four that brings the programming menu so at the moment this is set to run on the programming track obviously the output here is just for your main track it's it is easier to control um, your trains on the main track but when it comes to programming it's best using the programming track one it's perhaps less current on this dr5000 but two more importantly you're, you're separating your locomotives all over your layout from being programmed by using a dedicated programming track in this case i've got a test board so option one will let you adjust your locomotive address so we'll go to that and i'll just press one again and that's going to read the address and that says the locomotive address is number three read okay so I go press the mode button back out of that menu and i'll go to four for program again and on option two cv program track 
option three is main track um, loco net control cv adjustments is number four um, it's hardly used these days for more 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 use it's going to be on um, the main track or programming track so i'm going to select option two for the programming track and pressing one allows me to select the cv so i can go to cv let's say eight for example and then press enter and that's read a value of 151 so that's esu now if i press two i can change the value to say eight for a reset press enter and that will reset the locomotive so let's have a little demonstration on resetting the cvs um, so i can press mode four one and we will press two okay we have to press one to read it first it's probably just to check that there's a, a decoder on the track press two that allows you to program your address that's so going to program address number three so by pressing option three i can change the address to 12 and then i'll press enter then press two and that will write the address to the locomotive and just to double check i'll press one just to read the decoder And now that says address number two read OK. So I go back, hit the mode button, and I'll go back into the programming menu. And then I'll program excuse <coughs> me option two on the programming track. And for CV, I'll press one to activate the CV menu. Press one for CV number. Um, CV number one is for the short address. Press enter. And that's going to read a value of 12 which confirms that the address on the locomotive is 12. if i then go to one to type in eight and then go to value of eight hit enter that's now read the program and now one and one again to read cv1 and that should say three <coughs> excuse me but in this case it hasn't now that's interesting so i'll press one eight again give it a value of zero press enter program no loco so obviously that's that's done its reset now so this is quite handy to be able to actually change cvs on the locomotive um, we're going to do an example of cv free for the acceleration so i'll press one to enter the input mode then press free and hit enter and that reads an acceleration value of eight i want it to move off a little bit slower than that so i'm going to go and press two to enter a value and i'm going to enter a value of say 20. press enter and that's programmed that so then i'm going to press cv uh, press one again for cv3 hit enter and that's going to confirm that's been changed to 20. yep all right back to the locomotive menu and i'm just turning this up now and that's increase the momentum reduce the rate of acceleration so another thing that's handy is the emergency stop feature that turns the power off turns the power on so track power there you can see let's do function one as well um, change the direction to reverse and then once you stop so let's give it some power and then once you stop so that's basically it it's um quite a, an easy to use controller it's lightweight it sits nicely in the hands i like it quite a lot um I think it does quite a good job and you can even have it running a locomotive and disconnect it move to another place on your layout that's got locomonet terminal plug it in wherever you are and away you go
another feature brilliant 